Hello everyone, welcome back. I've got a great book for you today, but first I'd just like to start off by saying that this video is dedicated to Vanessa Bateman, who kindly uh, recommended this book to me. So the book is called The Necrophiliac by a woman called Gabrielle Whitcup. This book was published in 1972 when Gabrielle was aged 52 years old. So she was quite old when she published this book and the copy I've read was translated by a man called Don Bapst and it's a very good translation actually. Uh, the book consists of a series of diary entries written by Lucian, our necrophiliac protagonist. Lucian is pretty much an outsider, a loner, and he owns an antique store in Paris. It's explained in the book that he became a necrophiliac after being informed about his mother's death whilst masturbating. That's the backstory. That's how it all began for him. He was masturbating in his bedroom and his grandmother walked in and informed him that his mother had died. And then he ended up by his mother's deathbed uh, with an erection. That kind of messed with his head and turned him into a necrophiliac. And let me tell you, he's certainly not picky when it comes to his sec sexual interests. He likes men, women, children, and babies. Yes, you heard that right. This book actually covers the topic of paedophilic necrophilia. So if you're easily offended, steer clear of it. Uh, me, on the other hand, I like shocking books. So this was a great read. I, I really enjoyed this book. Now, it must be said, uh, Lucian, the protagonist, is not actually a dangerous man. He's not a killer. He's not a murderer. He gets his bodies by robbing graves. He goes into graveyards late at night and actually digs up graves, carries the bodies out of the coffins, puts them in his car and takes them home. He's never actually killed anyone. He's more of a grave robber. That must be emphasised. And right, this book, <clears throat> what can I say about this? Um, this book could easily have been a kind of cheap shocker. It could have been like, like, like a cheap horror book that was designed just to, just to offend people. But it's not that. It, it's much, much more than that. The Necrophiliac is written beautifully. The prose is amazing. The prose actually reads like poetry. There are certain sections in this book that, feel, that makes it feel like a poetry book. It really does. And just to emphasize that fact, I'd like to read you a quick excerpt. Okay, so this diary entry is about a woman called Suzanne. This woman has been dug up from her grave and Lucian, the protagonist, has her in his apartment, okay? I surrounded Suzanne with bags of ice. I often applied cologne to her face, which was marvellously intact, except for that greyish gleam that attaches itself to the cheekbones and that delicate pinching that refines the nose of the dead. Three days after her arrival, Suzanne opened her mouth suddenly, as if to say something. She had beautifully formed teeth. Didn't I say that the dead always have surprises to share? They are so good, the dead. For 14 days, I was unspeakably happy. Unspeakably, but not absolutely, because for me, joy never comes without the grief of knowing it is only ephemeral. All happiness carries with it the seed of its own end. 
Only death, mine, will deliver me from defeat, from the wound that time inflicts on us. With Suzanne, I experienced all the pleasures without exhausting them. I covered her with caresses. I tenderly licked her sex. I grabbed her greedily. I plunged myself into her again and again without stop. For at the time, I didn't have a preference for the delights of Sodom. Then Suzanne let out a light whistling that could have been described as admiring or politely ironic. A breath that seemed to not want to finish. A sweet, prolonged complaint. Beautiful prose. The book is very well written. And all the way through it, you'll find really impressive paragraphs like that. It's, it's poetry, some of it is poetry. It's a very quick read. The, the whole book is only about 108 pages. You can read it in one day. I'm a slow reader and I've actually read this book twice in the last eight days or so. I read it twice because it's such a good read. It impressed me that much. Um, also, throughout the book, there are several references to classical works of art. One of which is a painting by Hieronymus Bosch titled The Garden of Earthly Delights. I've had a quick look at this painting online and it's well worth the time to uh, take a look at. Look it up on Google and take a look. It's, it's one of those paintings where there's so much going on in there. You can probably look at it for about a month and still notice different things. So take a look at that, the, the Garden of Earthly Delights. Um, I'd like to read another quick excerpt as well. This is from page 97 and in this part of the book the protagonist has two Swedish twins aged about 16 or 17. These two people have drowned in a river and he's actually gone and collected them from a wooden hut. So, when I had laid out the Swedish adolescents on my bed, I didn't regret my trouble. They must have been 16 or 17 years old and I've never seen anything as beautiful as those two. They resembled each other in an indescribable way and had no doubt been twins. Death had changed the quality of their tans, which the salt had frosted into a gold of a strange, subtle pallor, comparable to that given off by a candle flame. Each of them had a long, asexual body. The virility of the boy hardly stood out. The breasts of the girl were practically non-existent, though infinitely desirable and evoked, I don't know which, angelic nature to my eyes. The languor of their silvery blonde hair, the absence of eyebrows above their severely bulging eyelids, their protruding cheekbones, like those of fleshless skulls, the evanescent colour of their thin, mauve lips, expressed in them a most mortal predestination. Strangers to the world of the living, they had been made to die and, right from the start, death had passionately marked them. Now that they are in my presence, I hardly dare approach their beauty. Outside, the tempest has let up and shakes the trees of Polisipo. Enormous clouds roll across the sky. Hasati's dogs roar past. It's disturbing, don't get me wrong. This book touches on very delicate topics, to say the least. Some people will be appalled by it, but so what? It's an interesting read, it's a shocking read, and uh, I loved it. I read it twice in about eight days, as I say. Um, I've looked into the life of Gabrielle Whitcock as well, and she, she had a very interesting life. She was born in 1920 in uh, France, I think, or Germany. 
and during the war she met a Nazi deserter who she hid from the Nazis. This man was 40 years older than she was and after the war she actually ended up marrying him. Marrying him. Not only was he 40 years older than her, he was actually homosexual as well and she still married him. And then at some point in the 1980s he developed Parkinson's disease and he told her that he was going to commit suicide. And her response was, okay, go ahead. And then she came home one day and found him dead. And then in the year 2002, when she was 82 years old, she was diagnosed with lung cancer and she decided to commit suicide as well at age 82, which, which I think is probably quite rare. So uh, she was, from what, from what I can see, she was very morbid, she was very, she had a gothic side and I think she was a bit of a misanthrope as well. Uh, it, you know, it's worth looking into her life. She, she was an interesting character. So my verdict on this one is read it, definitely check it out. The Necrophiliac by Gabrielle Whitcock. I loved it so much I read it twice. There you go. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, remember to uh, check out my site jamesflynn.org for a free gift and to discover the meaning of life. And in the meantime, until my next video, try to have a great day on this weird unforgiving, merciless, peculiar rock we call Earth. Goodbye.